Hi, it's Lee and welcome to The Tesh Economist. All right, I just did a video explaining how it's possible deliveries could be 30% higher than Q4 this quarter and that what people are inferring as demand issues could be inferred as Tesla pushing deliveries. The reasons I think it could be the latter is due to so few exports from China in November, implying ample domestic demand, along with so few exports we're seeing in December also. Then on top of that, the fact Tesla are selling discounted vehicles in the US this month when they qualify for a tax credit next month, implying that they would have no problem selling these vehicles next month at a full price. These are the facts we have. Tesla are offering incentives in China too, of course. I'm not suggesting that these incentives are not to increase demand. Of course they are. I'm suggesting that it is possible these incentives are to increase demand this month or quarter and these vehicles would have sold anyway in the following months instead. Anyway, these are the facts. The media are using it as FUD to claim that there are demand issues, but we have the same facts as them. And as you can see, it can be inferred multiple ways, but I don't mean to just provide hopium for you as they call it, in that there is hope that Tesla is going to be as successful as we thought through all the bad times. Instead, I thought we could go more along the lines of copium, I guess we can call it, in how to cope with where the stock price is today. Of course, the stock price being down does mean that people are more drawn to the negative assumptions of an event too. Somewhat cause and effect of a downward spiral of negativity, people drawing conclusions that everything is therefore going badly for the company. I recently made a video proposing there was a possibility that Tesla could hit 450,000 deliveries for Q4 and that they could end up increasing profits by 50% compared to Q3 as a result which is a massive jump in profits and would mean that likely be felt in the stock price. I was gonna do some financials and see if that was actually the case, but I thought instead we could start with financials if we had just 430,000 deliveries instead and see what we'd have there. I'm going to be leaning more on the bearish side as a result, or at least what I feel is bearish, hopefully like a worst case scenario. Now you can see the numbers I have, but the numbers that people care about the most are ASPs, which when I include regulatory credits and FSD revenue, we get $54,557 compared to $54,364 from Q3. So pretty much the same, although we have a weaker dollar now and we've ramped up more in Texas and Berlin. So despite the price drops in China, we're dealing with about the same ASPs. I've lowered margins due to the price drops in China. I've lowered margins from Fremont too, due to the discounts Tesla are offering. I feel like I have lowered these margins more than they should be, so much so that I have 27.6% margin, including regulatory credits, which is actually lower than 27.9% last quarter. I think the reason we had such low margins last quarter though, was due to the new factories that were producing still low numbers and really lowering the average margins. I've put in 10% margins for Berlin and 5% for Texas, which I hope is super low, but I want to be careful I'm possibly acting a little apprehensive here and overcompensating for last quarter where my margin estimates were too high. And this is meant to err on the side of pessimism. To be clear, this quarter I have about the same ASPs, despite more long range Model Ys being sold from Berlin and Texas, and despite the lower dollar. However, the Chinese vehicles are getting a lower ASP, but bear in mind that is just for domestic Chinese sales. Not all cars that come out of Shanghai the export prices have not reduced, at least in their local currencies. They have increased in US dollars, however. Then despite all of this, I've actually lowered margins to less than where they were last quarter, when I assume the reason last quarter was so low due to Texas and Berlin, whose margins should have improved much more. Also margins in Shanghai last quarter were lower because of all the lineup grade cost, which were felt in cost of goods sold. On top of that, we would also assume that now the Shanghai lines are ramped up, then the cost of goods sold per vehicle would now be lower too, implying margins should actually have increased due to improved efficiencies. Therefore, I think that it would be unlikely for the numbers to be any lower than this. I think our deliveries numbers are realistic enough too. We're taking what the street is estimating, which have historically been much lower than the true numbers. Sure, some people say they may even be 420, there is evidence that there is a possibility it could be as high as 470,000 too. I'm not suggesting it likely, I'm just saying it's not impossible. Production could be around 460 to 470,000 for the quarter, 
and then there's 30,000 in inventory or transit from last quarter, that's potentially 500,000 units. Personally, I think 450,000 still has some potential. Anyway, I increased energy slightly, although that could be much higher with new Megapack factory ramping, and I've increased OPEX just to be careful. When we get through all of that, we have a net profit of $4.5 billion, 37% higher than last quarter, and a non-gap EPS of $1.40, which is up 34%. If you analyze that, then we have $18 billion a year, or an insane P ratio of 27 at today's stock price. Some analysts are saying $4 billion with 430,000 deliveries, or even lower, but I think we've been cautious enough here and shown that it's unlikely that earnings should be below this. Yes, there's FSD deferred revenue potentially on top of that as well, which is probably going to make everything look good too. Now, if I increase this to 450,000 deliveries at these margins, then we're at $4.7 billion. However, I think my margins are too low, so it could be closer to $5 billion. Bear in mind, this is the average for the quarter. The run rate is obviously higher now than it was at the start of the quarter. And we would expect that the actual run rate or capacity is now around 500,000. However, that is the production rate of what Tesla are capable of, not necessarily the same with deliveries, meaning it would assume every car sold. At that rate, the PE ratio is likely below 25, which is up to you to decide on whether you think that is high or low. The rhetoric we're hearing is that potentially there is not the demand for this many vehicles, and that as a result, Tesla are having to cut production because there aren't enough buyers for their cars, and they can't export enough of them due to there not being enough space on ships. And Tesla don't have enough room to store this many extra cars in inventory. But this rumor about cutting production is only now supposedly for one week in December and only one line. That's not a huge reduction, and the fact that Tesla didn't export many vehicles in November and don't appear to be exporting in December, analysts think that perhaps Tesla have underestimated their demand in China for December as a result, despite such a huge number of sales in November. They don't seem to think it will carry through to December. They think that rather than cut prices, Tesla would cut production or simply add more of these vehicles to inventory and potentially export them out next quarter to where the demand backlog actually is. Yes, with all this, it is very easy to spin FUD, and when the stock price is down, sentiment becomes more negative and it becomes easier to believe in FUD. I'm saying that there is evidence there is enough demand in China due to these extra incentives Tesla are offering. I'm also suggesting it would be bad business to have not exported more out in November if demand was this bad, and you'd expect Tesla to have a reasonable forecast on demand. I'm not trying to keep my blinders on here. I am merely trying to maintain objectively, despite so much FUD pointing to the contrary, and other authoritative analysts going along with it. I don't think in the short term even it's a big deal. Seeing those massive domestic sales in China for November was a big deal. So I think that if Tesla have to, they can export about two thirds of the Shanghai production anyway, and shouldn't have too much trouble selling the remaining one third domestically, even if they had to drop the price slightly again. It's now only a small fraction of the market. But bear in mind, the Model Y in China used to sell for less than it still does today. Tesla went on a rampant price rise across the board because demand was so high and the prices still haven't come back down. What about medium term growth then? Well, we probably won't see much more growth in production in Shanghai as it's the new factories that will be ramping and they are in Europe and the US, markets which should have ample demand. I'm not gonna lie, it's tough when the stock price gets this low it does get harder to cope. But as long as Tesla can keep ramping up these new factories, then the numbers will come. Hopefully this Q4 does at least adjust the stock price to a level that is easier for us to cope with for now, as it might still take a little while until we see a real recovery, when these new factories start hitting actual volume production. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.